I made a lot of money today at the bar I own. So much money, I don't even know what to do with it all. I've heard some bad rumors about your bar. Is everything okay? What rumors? What are you talking about? People are saying your bar is a total ripoff. Charging tens of thousands for just a few drinks? Isn't that a bit much? What? Look, that's just business. Sometimes you have to be ruthless to make money. Yeah, but you're taking it way too far. I heard Mr. Thompson had to pay $50,000. Maybe you should be more reasonable with your prices. Why do I have to listen to you? You don't even know how to run a business. No, I've never run a business, but I know a scam when I see one. If you can't make money without ripping people off, maybe you should quit. Are you telling me to quit my business? That's pretty harsh. If you can run it properly, fine. But what you're doing now is just wrong. Oh, so now you're an expert on business? People like you who've never run anything are the most annoying. Maybe, but I can't just ignore the fact that people are getting scammed. Shut up. I'm trying to survive. I won't let this slide. I know what your dad looks like. And the next time he passes by, I'll make sure he pays a lot. Wait, no, you shouldn't do that. Too late. My guys are professionals at pulling people in. Once we spot him, he's as good as charged. I'm telling you, you'll regret it. My dad's not someone you want to mess with. Oh, sure. Trying to scare me now, are you? It's not going to work. Once I've set my sights on someone, they're getting ripped off. No question about it. You're admitting it's a scam. I'm serious. You really don't want to do this. The other day, a couple of drinks and I made $150,000 from your dad. He was easy money. I even got a video of him taking out cash at the ATM. Want to see it? I think you better run. My dad is a mafia boss. What? A mafia boss? You're joking. No, I'm not. That's why I told you to back off. Why didn't you tell me that from the start? Because if you avoided targeting him, you just go after someone else. I figured if you really scammed him, he'd take care of it. You've got to be kidding me. He just left, but maybe he didn't go to the ATM. Maybe he went to his office to get his guys. You have to stop him right now. Why should I? This has nothing to do with me. Of course it does. That's your father. If you don't stop him, who will? Sure, he's my dad, but I didn't send him to your bar. If you didn't want trouble, you shouldn't have ripped him off. What choice did I have? If I didn't scam people, I wouldn't make any money. Everyone's doing it. Not everyone. That's insulting to every legitimate business owner. Whatever. This is your fault. Do something about it. Nope. Not my problem. You made your bed. Now lie in it. Fine. I've got an idea. You can pay your dad's bill for him. Excuse me? No way. Yes, you can. Just pay the 150000 and everything will be fine. Absolutely not. That doesn't even make sense. Why would I pay for his bill? Because it's your dad. He'll be less angry if you cover for him. No, he'll be even angrier. I guarantee it. I called him, by the way, and he's pretty mad. You called him? Then tell him you'll pay the bill. No way. Also, it's not actually 150000 right? Sarah went quiet. No, he ordered two $75,000 bottles of champagne. He said it was just regular champagne. You're definitely ripping people off. It was high-end imported champagne. That's why it costs so much. Well, my dad's coming back with backup to check the place out. No, stop him, please. Not my problem. Maybe this will teach you to stop scamming people. I can't believe this. Are you telling me to shut down my business? No, I'm saying you should stop if you can't run it without scamming people. That's the same thing. You're telling me to quit. No, I'm just saying you shouldn't be running a business if you're ripping people off. I need the money. I buy designer clothes and bags with what I make. That's my passion. So you're not even putting the money back into your business? You're just using it for yourself? Exactly. Running a business is just a way to fund my dream life. Don't you work to buy the things you want? Sure, but I don't scam people to do it. 
The conversation continued, but in the end, Emily's dad showed up at the bar with his guys, and they demanded all the money back from Sarah. It turned out the $150,000 bill was really just $4,000. After returning the money to all the people she had scammed, Sarah couldn't keep the bar running. The bad reputation spread, and soon enough, the bar went out of business. She got exactly what she deserved. As for Emily, the whole ordeal sparked her interest in bars. Now she occasionally goes out to have a drink at a place that doesn't scam its customers. That reunion the other day was fun. Yeah, everyone's changed so much. I know, right? Time's not so kind to everyone. You've got a lot more wrinkles around your eyes now, though. It was hilarious. Oh, really? I thought you had some gray hair, too. What did you say? There's a line between what's funny and what's just plain mean, you know? Uh-huh. It's a boomerang coming right back at you. Ugh, who cares? Anyway, listen to this. I failed at another matchmaking event. Wait, you still not married? You mentioned someone at the reunion. That guy turned out to be a total mama's boy. No thanks. Oh no, but you should really find someone soon, or it might get hotter. Easy for you to say. You bagged a hot, rich, successful guy and already had a kid, right? Yeah, actually, she was born recently. It's been a lot of work. Ugh, you and your perfect little life. You should just keep that stuff to yourself at reunions. Everyone was annoyed with you. Really? Everyone seemed nice to me. That's your problem. It was all in your head. Some people are still single, and you're out here bragging about having a baby? It's rude. Maybe some people feel that way, but most people were happy for me. <sighs> That's just your opinion. Maybe I should just steal your husband. What? That's crazy talk. Stop joking around. No, I'm serious. It's honestly weird that a plain girl like you landed such a high-quality guy. A girl like me, smart, funny, fit, with a great sense of style, is a much better match for him. Smart, funny, fit, and a great sense of style isn't exactly a thing people say about you. You don't even know what my husband looks like. Doesn't matter. I'll find him and steal him away. This is ridiculous. You don't know what kind of trouble you'll cause if you keep this up. Oh, come on. You're just scared I'll succeed. I'll steal him and raise your daughter, too. I'm telling you not to go through with this. The other day, I'm at a hotel with your husband having fun right now. My husband's out of the country on a business trip. What are you talking about? Wait, who am I in the hotel room with then? I don't know. What are you doing right now? I'm in the bathroom getting ready. Why? Get out of that room. Check if that guy is still there. Why? What's going on? Just check. He's gone, and there's a note. What does it say? I took some embarrassing photos and videos of you. If you don't want them all over the internet, you better do what I say. I've got your contact info, so I'll be in touch. See, I told you, you've been tricked. What's happening? Is this what you meant by bad people doing bad things lately? Exactly. People who trick women into compromising situations, record them, and then blackmail them. Oh my god. How was I supposed to know this could happen? It's scary, right? I didn't expect it either. That's why I'm always careful. Luckily, we've got a neighborhood watch to help keep track of anyone suspicious. I just went along with it because he said he was your husband. What am I supposed to do? Honestly, I'm more worried that you went along so easily. Even kids know better than to follow strangers. But what now? He took videos of me, and he wants money. Going to the police won't help much. These guys are pros at covering their tracks. If you make a wrong move, those videos will go public. So what should I do? You've got to help me figure this out. Let's not forget, you were trying to steal my husband. That's not what this is about. I just wanted to be happy with him. Right, by breaking up my family? No, no, it's not like that. Did you really expect me to help you after that? But I'm single and lonely. 
I just wanted love and a hot husband. You can find love, but it doesn't have to be with my husband. I just wanted what you have. I was jealous, okay? Jealousy isn't an excuse to ruin someone's life. Why does someone like you get to have everything? Maybe it's because I'm not a terrible person. How can you say that? I deserve to be happy too. Maybe if you hadn't tried to destroy other people's happiness, you'd have found your own. Why is this happening to me? Why won't anyone help me? Because you've made your bed, Emma. Now you have to lie in it. A month later, Emma called Amy in a panic. Emma, I'm sorry. Please help me. What now? That guy's been blackmailing me for weeks. He's taken over $100,000 already. I told you this would happen. What about the police? I went to them, but they said there's not enough evidence. The guy is too careful. Of course he is. He knows exactly what he's doing. I don't know what to do. Please help me. I'm sorry, Emma, but you got yourself into this. And I'm not forgetting that you tried to steal my husband. Are you still mad about that? I've already lost so much. That's the price you pay for trying to break up a family. This is too much. It's not fair. In the end, the police never caught the man and Emma lost all her money. Once the savings were gone, the harassment stopped. Emma now works a part-time job at a hardware store, struggling to make ends meet. Meanwhile, I continue to live happily with my husband and daughter unaware of Emma's downfall. It was such a coincidence running into you today. I'm sorry for making you pay for me. I can't believe I forgot my wallet. Don't worry about it. I never expected to run into you at the members only store in the next town over. Same here. By the way, I noticed you drive a minivan. Yeah, with a big family. I figured a bigger car would be more practical. That makes sense. I'm so glad I met a friend like you. Let's be close friends from now on. Sure, but it feels a little fast to call us best friends already. Well, if you say you're my best friend, then you are. Unless you don't want to be friends with me. It's not that I don't want to be friends. But what did you want to ask me about? Oh, it's just that this weather is perfect for camping. True, the rainy season is over, and we've got clear skies ahead. Exactly. I've been wanting to go camping. That sounds fun. I love camping. Hold on, did you think I was inviting you? I assumed that's where this conversation was heading. No way, we've only known each other for less than a month. But you just said we were best friends a minute ago. That's a totally different situation. I'm so confused. So what do you need from me? Well, to go camping, you need a car, right? Sure, especially with all the gear and the distance to the nearest campsite. Exactly. That's why I need to borrow your minivan. Wait, what? You want to borrow my car? Yep. We're going camping in two weeks, so thanks in advance. Hold on. I can't just lend you my car. Besides, I can't do it in two weeks. Why not? You've got a car, don't you? Yes, but you also have a car, right? We do, but it's just a compact car. My husband says it would be more fun with a bigger car. My whole family is excited about this trip. Your whole family? Even your husband's on board with us? Of course, we think alike. Wow, you two are something else. I've heard things, but this is surprising. What do you mean, heard things? Never mind. Anyway, I'm sorry, but I can't lend you my car. Why don't you just rent one? Rent a car? That would be way too expensive. I'd rather spend that money on some premium steaks for the trip. Wait, you're planning on borrowing my car for four days? Yeah, what's the big deal? It's just a car. I'm not sure why you think that's normal. Look, if you let me borrow it, I'll even let you into my mom group. You look like you could use some friends. I'm fine, thanks. I don't need to be part of any group. Don't be so tough. You just moved here, right? It must be hard making friends. For your kid's sake, it's better if we get along. You're being really pushy. But no, the answer is still no. What's your problem? I'm doing you a favor, and you're acting like this? A favor? How are you doing me a favor? Let it go. I'm not lending you my car. Fine. I'll figure something else out. I'm glad we understand each other. Take care, Sarah. 
a few weeks later. Good morning. Beautiful day, isn't it? Uh, good morning. Yeah, it's nice out today. Perfect weather for camping. I borrowed the minivan. The steaks I bought are amazing. What? My minivan is in for inspection. Wait, what? But I'm driving a minivan right now. Are there any stuffed animals in the passenger seat? Yeah, there was a teddy bear plus some food and drinks in the back. Then that's not my car. You must have taken my neighbor's car. What? No way. Yes way. That's definitely not my car. But your house has the red roof, right? I remember hearing from someone that your yard is big, so I thought I got the right place. I do have a red roof, but my yard isn't as big as my neighbor's. I didn't look that closely. I just saw a car with the keys inside and thought I got lucky. So you just took the car without checking? Yep. Now my family and I are enjoying a great camping trip. Well, thanks for explaining everything so clearly. But wait, you just said your neighbor was someone important? Yep, he's the head of the local school board. No way, I can't stand that guy. Really? I had no idea. Why didn't you warn me? This is a disaster. Of all the people's cars to take, it had to be his. It didn't seem relevant at the time. Why are you so scared of him? It's not a big deal, but last year, I borrowed some money from him. I thought he seemed nice enough, but when he got mad, he was terrifying. Oh, I see. I heard that story. You didn't pay him back for six months. Of course he got angry. Yeah, but I paid him back eventually. It was only two grand. He's rich. He could have let it slide. Two thousand dollars is a lot of money. You should have paid him back sooner. Ugh, don't lecture me. But now you figured out who took the car, so can you help me out here? Help you? I already told him. You what? Why would you tell him? It's the right thing to do. You can't just steal people's cars. I thought you were on my side. I'm not on anyone's side. This is your mess. Is he mad? Very. He's planning to file a police report. The police? That's a bit much, isn't it? Not at all. This is serious. No, no, no. If the police get involved, everyone will find out. My reputation will be ruined. That's your problem. Please, just talk to him for me. There's nothing I can do. You're on your own. The next day. How could you not warn me? Now the police know about everything. And I got busted for drunk driving, too. Wait, you came back drunk? That's your fault. But I thought those drinks were from you. As a peace offering. Why would I give you anything? Especially after all this. You're so annoying. Now we both lost our licenses. And that guy will probably tell everyone what happened. Actually, the news has already spread. What? Haven't you heard? People are talking. They're calling you the stingy troublemaker. What? That's not true. I haven't caused any trouble. Oh, really? You borrowed money and not paid it back, and you took someone's car without asking. How is that not causing trouble? Okay, maybe I've borrowed some things, but that doesn't make me a bad person. You're missing the point. How would you feel if someone did this to you? I'd be furious. I'd never speak to them again. Exactly. You've done this to lots of people, so it's no wonder they're mad. But I'm different. I'm the leader of the mom group. Do you really think you're some kind of queen? Basically, the others are like peasants, bringing me offerings. This conversation is going nowhere. By the way, I have another message for you. What is it now? The car you took has some damage. Wait, what? And you owe for the food you ate, too. No way! This is going to cost a fortune. I don't know what to tell you. You'll have to work it out with him. I can't deal with him. I blocked him on everything. Well, that's on you. Can't you please help me? No, this is your problem. But you're the only one who's still talking to me. That's not my fault. You've burned your bridges with everyone else. And by the way, you still owe me that $50 from the store. Really? You're bringing that up now? Yes, and there are other moms you have, too. Fine, I'll pay you back. Thank you. Well, I'm done here. Good luck dealing with this mess. Wait, don't leave me hanging. 
Goodbye, Sarah. In the end, the neighbor filed a police report and Sarah had to pay for the car damages and the food. Sarah also returned the money she owed to the other moms. The incident spread through the neighborhood and Sarah's family eventually moved away. No one knows where they are now, but hopefully they've learned not to cause trouble for others.